Hola a todos, I'm here with another grammar video, this time on the difference between ser and estar. You should know they both mean to be in English, but they are not interchangeable. So let's learn how to differentiate them and when to use each one. Now, you may have heard that ser is for permanent things, whilst estar is for temporary things, but this is not entirely true. Here's the acronym we need to learn. Doctor place. Let's go through each letter. So, the D in the first doctor starts, stands for description, like a physical description. For example, ella es alta, she is tall. Then, O is for occupation, for some sort of job. So, soy médico, I am a doctor. You'll notice you don't need un médico. You never say um, the article before um, the job. You just say soy médico, for example, so without un. Then, characteristics, the C is for characteristics. Um, so, mi hermana es simpática, describing people. Uh, my sister is nice, we're using es, not esta. Time and date, um, for example, son las tres, is three o'clock. Any reference to the, would, for example, the day of the week, we can say hoy es jueves, for example, today is Thursday. Um, we're using es, we're using the ser, not esta, which would be the one for um, estar. Vale, so we guess time and date. Next is O is for origin, so where you're from. Sorry, the Argentina, for example. I am from Argentina. And lastly, R is for relationship. Any relationship with possessions, with objects. For example, it is my phone, es mi móvil. The S in es mi móvil is um, using from ser, has come from ser. Or, for example, with people, es mi madre, she is my mother. Again, using S, which is um, conjugated from ser. Then we go to estar. So, the location, sorry, the acronym here is place. The first word is also place. So, the place of objects, esta debajo de la mesa, it is below the table. This esta comes from estar. Location, estoy en la biblioteca, I am in the library. Again, where you are, your location is going to be using the verb estar, not soy en la biblioteca, estoy en la biblioteca. Then actions, so this is the present continuous tense, most likely. Um, estoy durmiendo, I am sleeping, I am talking, we're using estoy. Condition, it is clean, it is dirty, for example, está limpio or está sucio, it is clean or it is dirty. Then lastly, emotion, how you're doing, I am well, I am good, we're using estoy bien. If someone asks you, how are you, they say, como estás, not como eres. So estás, as you can see here, I put the present tense um, for estar and for ser. And let's go through the conjugations in just a second. So here's a quick recap. Here's the full picture of doctor, place, when to use each. In a second, we're going to go on to practice um, with some examples as well. So if I grab a pen, um, we can start filling these tables in. So these are the verb charts for ser. Let's start through the present tense first. So how do you say I am using ser? Soy. Yo soy. Yeah, let's do um let's do both simultaneously. So soy is I am for estar it's estoy. Do you see how they're similar? They both end in this O Y. Um if I do that in a different colour. So O Y O Y. They both end in O Y. Yeah? So soy estoy. Next one we have eres for you are eres and then here using a star in the present tense you are estas. Really careful of accents as well. There are accents in a lot of these. Um, so accent on the A there, estas. Um, again, they both do begin with E. I think this is quite a tricky one to learn, actually, this one here, because um, it looks nothing like the said, the initial said. It has no S, doesn't start off with the letter S in there. So I think that's quite tricky. Um, let's switch back and let's continue. So he is S. This one you, you would have used all the time. Again, it does not start with S, but um, you would have seen it all the time. Here we have esta. With the accent on the A, so S and esta, let's keep going. We have somos is next. So here we're back with starting with the letter S. Somos for um, estar, estamos, with no accent there. Then we have um, sois, which is a bit of a funny one, um, and you probably would not have used it a lot, the vosotros form. This one here, for all of these, vosotros is not very common at all. So, yeah, sois is not something you're going to see or hear a lot. And it's only used in Spain, not in, like, Latin America. So that's sois. And then for vosotros, what is it for the estar? Estáis. Vale? Estáis. And again, accents always on the A for all of these, um, except, except for the one in estamos. And then lastly, here, again, son, you would have used all the time. Son, um, son and es. Really common, same with estar and están, which is what goes here. If I switch back, um, están, 
you use these to describe things in your writing and like speaking and stuff you use these all the time um i think if i zoom out i think eres is the hardest one to learn here eres i'm here soy eres es somos soy son estoy estás está estamos está este san you can see i think there's a lot of similarities let's switch color to um for example o as a amos ais an there are a lot of similarities between these uh, between your normal sort of present tense or as a amos ais an um, and that may help you sort of find some patterns between those okay we are now going to move on to the preterite tense so this is one of the two past tenses the preterite and the imperfect the preterite is for like single action stands sort of once in the past i went to school um you know i walked the dog something like that it's a single action that happened once the imperfect is for continuous things normally in english you say i something used to happen i used to play is the imperfect okay preterite let's switch color back so your form in the preterite for said um is fui fui and then for estar, the preterite, not as common, um, is estuve. You may have not seen this one as, as much, um, but fui is, yeah, fui and estuve. Then next is fuiste. You'll see all of these begin with the F. Um, and then for estar, first we have estuve, then we have estuviste. Again, you really would not have seen this all that much. I don't think it's very common. I'm um, just like in, in your normal speaking um, day to day language and class and stuff. Um, you notice this este is really common. It's um, the same sort of ending, similar ending to the preterite er and ir verbs. So that may help you see something este. Okay, you remember aste, este is the preterite tense. Um, switch back color. So, fui, fui step next is fue. Oops. And this is something you would have seen all of the time. Let's, yep, fue. And then for this side, it's estuvo. Estuvo. Then fuimos, I'm going to zoom through some of these. So fuimos, again, you will have seen all of the time. And then estuvimos. And what do you notice with these endings on the left? I'm writing this fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos. And the next is fuisteis. What do we notice? I'll tell you once I finish writing these. So fuisteis comes next. Then a really long one here. Um, estuvisteis, estuvisteis. Make sure I spell it correctly. Lastly, here is fueron, and here is estuvieron. So I think all of these are not as difficult to learn, just because they're quite similar to the normal preterite endings. Um, anyway, however, to point your attention to these ones here, why have you seen these all the time? Well, because it's the same as the IR preterite ones. Let me zoom in here and just write. Um, same as IR, which is your to go in the preterite, so which is the same tense here. Apologies for my bad handwriting. So if we also means I went, you went, fuiste. Um, fue is he or she went, etc. We went, you guys went. And lastly, they went. So it is the exact same. It also means, you know, I was, so I were, um, you were, he, she was, um, we were, you guys were, and they were. It's the exact, they're both the same. What if we has two meanings? I was, or um, I went, same, both the same word. So hence, which is why you would have seen these six all of the time, you're quite familiarized with them. But it may also be confusing, you know, when do I use each one? Also, fui and fue look really similar. People often get confused between these. Um, fue is the he, she one, fui is the your one, the I form. So I went or I was. Um, okay, that's the preterite tense done. Let's move on to the imperfect tense. Um, let's do the estar ones actually first, because these are all in, in the regular, um, regular endings nothing so special or awkward about them so a star in the imperfect as you would just guess you get rid of um the last two letters here and you add the abba ending isn't it so estaba estaba estabas let's just go through all of these estaba again so it's the exact same here and here is the same ending there estabamos and there's an accent on this one be careful oops um accent there estabamos esta vice for you guys and lastly esta one so pretty um, self-explanatory the same as like the normal abba endings um easy it gets harder with the ser this is where it gets a little bit awkward here a little bit tricky to learn first one is era era means i used to be 
I used to be. Or almost like I was as well, but in English we often say used to for like the imperfect sort of tense. So era, then you can go eras, era, eramos, and the rest I think is self-explanatory. Almost like o asa amos as an, so eramos, erais, and lastly eran. Um, and you would have used era and uh, eran a lot in your different writing, 90 words of questions and stuff. Um, if you've been writing Spanish at all, you would have used these verbs quite a lot. Um, so that's the imperfect tense. Why right? something used to happen, I used to be, you used to be, he, she used to be, or usted, which is the formal. And then ustedes is the formal for plural. So eran, um, they used to be, or like the plural you used to be. Okay, that is all of the um, present, present, and the imperfect, the really common ones. For future and, and conditional ones, go through those actually as well before I forget. So for future, um, you have ser, estar. And to the end of those, you add the different endings. So for future, let me just write down here, future. So this is the will future. For example, I will be, you will be. We have e. This is the normal endings. I'm writing here e, as, a. Be careful of the accents. Emos, eis, amos, what's last? An. Vale, so for example, seré. Let's get a laser here. Seré, será, será, seremos, seréis, serán. Estaré, estarás. Teach join together as normal as the regular ones do. And then lastly, conditional. Let's write this nicely. This is the would, isn't it? Something would happen. The conditional, um, ia, ias, ia, iamos, iais. Um, and lastly, I've written two because they have my ian. So ia, ias, ia, iamos, iais, ian. Um, as normal, estaria, estarias, estaria, seria. So seria, for example, something you would have seen a lot is it would be. But be, always be careful. Um, estaria is the exact same thing, isn't it? But what's the difference? Well, it all comes back to doctor place. Okay, so seria, it would be, yeah. So that's the future, conditional, and then the three really common tenses, present, present, and the imperfect. Okay, now let's talk about the subjunctive tenses, or just the present subjunctive, we'll just focus on this one. I'm not going to go into what the subjunctive is. It's a different mood. It's almost like a different tense, but it's called a mood. Um, it works very similar to, similarly to present tense. It translates the same way. Um, so let's start writing the ending. So subjunctive, um, normally it looks quite similar to the present tense, but it's normally just a couple letters off. So first one here is sea. So sea means I am. Why? Right? It's different to soy. Um, and again, if you want to know sort of how the subjunctive works, I'll put links in the description to that. I'm not going to go into that right now. But it's a more complex structure. Um, sea means I am. Then let's do all of these ones here. Then seas. And hey, from here you can tell it's quite um, self explanatory. Sea, 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 seamos. Seais. I'm missing a few accents, aren't I? Seais. And then sean. And then here, este. So it sort of looks like estoy slightly, doesn't it? It begins the same way. Um, but este, oops, estes, este again. So it's the same for the uh, the I and the he, she, for quite a lot of these are the same. Um, este, estemos, estes, and then lastly, esten. So if you're saying so, if you're saying GCSEs um, and you want to learn more complex language, use more complex um, structures and stuff, you can use the subjunctive. Let me just give you some um, sentences you could learn. One really good one is cuando sea mayor. So without even knowing how the subjunctive works, you can use cuando sea mayor. It means when. So cuando means when I am older. But it's not cuando soy mayor. It's cuando sea mayor. It works the exact same way. You can continue with like, for example, me gustaría. Um, etc. This is how you can add complexity to your sentences, um, specifically for like GCSE level. Okay, now let's talk about food actually, before we go into practicing with these sentences. Let's talk about food. Food is a bit of a weird one. Um, as if a slightly different rules here. So it says food, use one of them to describe food you are eating or have eaten. Is it ser or is it estar? It's estar. So food can be a bit tricky, but if you're describing food that you're eating, you have eaten, you're describing the taste of it. For example, the food like was delicious, we're using estar for that. Yeah. Um, and then for, we use ser, which is going to be this one here, for generic food descriptions. 
for example, like um, you know, vegetables are healthy. That's a generic statement, gen generic description for food, not specifically describing the taste of one thing. That's going to be said. We use said for that. Okay. And then last but not least, let's do loads of practice with these different sentences. They're all in different tenses as well. So it should be maybe slightly tricky as well, actually. So first one, my cousin is from Italy. First, we're going to think what tense is this. So let's actually do it in a bit of a strategic way. So first we think about the tense. Is it the present, the project, the imperfect, whatever? Then we think about, um, what else should we think about? Ser or estar? And why? So I'm going to write down one of the letters from Dr. Place to say, okay, it's this letter because it's ser or estar because of this letter, because of the reason in the acronym. Lastly, we think about who. Is it I, you, etc.? Who is the subject? Um, of the verb. So the first one is my cousin is also going to be he. So anyway, um, tense. What tense is this? Is is the present tense. It's just a generic present tense. Um, he's always from Italy. It's just not going to change, but we're saying the sentence in the present tense. So present tense. Then, ser o estar. For this, we look at the context of the sentence, right? Ignore the is bit for now. Think about, okay, my cousin, okay, fine, from Italy. Oh, look, he's from somewhere. What do we say about, where's it gone? Being from somewhere. I am from Argentina, its origin is said. So I'm just gonna write a little O here to remind me. It's the O in doctor for origin, okay? So we've, we've got said or started, we've got that, it's said. Lastly, who is it? Well, it's my cousin, it's he or she. Let me get my laser. My cousin, he or she. So we go to the present tense area for said, he or she, S. So now it has to be, this is translates to S. So cousin, do you know the word for cousin? It's primo, assuming a bit more. Mi primo es de, this form translates to de, and then Italia. So mi primo es de Italia, um, and this is the translation for that is over there. Okay, that was an easy one, let's keep going. This is now different tense, let's see what tense it is. Used to be, what did I say, is always gonna be the imperfect tense, nine times out of 10. So imperfect, ser o estar, let's look at the context of the sentence. Okay, they find firefighters, that's a job, isn't it? It's an occupation. Um, occupation is going to be ser. So again, I can write o here, but this time it's o for occupation. Um, let's write occupation out here fully, instead of origin. So I know it has to be ser. So imperfect, ser, and then who is the, you know, who's the verb? What's it happening to? They. So they is um, the bottom one was at the end, so let's find the table for said and the imperfect. Oh look, eran. Oops. Um, so they is going to be eran. Um, a little tip is whenever anything is they, it's always going to end in n, the verb. All of these, so eran, estaban, fueron, and son, always end in n. Okay? So what do we say? Eran, right? So they, we can just say ellos for the time being. It doesn't say so of who, my parents, whatever, just says they. So ellos, let's use is the generic they, eran, used to be, eran, and the word for firefighters, bomberos, this is a job title, bomberos, so ellos, eran, bomberos, we don't need the ellos there, um, so put in brackets, you don't need it, depending on if you have like mis padres or something beforehand, but yeah, eran, bomberos is the main bit there, used to be firefighters, okay, let's zoom forward then, we are watching, um, tense, I know it automatically is the present continuous, which I haven't actually talked about earlier in this video, but you'll see how to sort of translate this in a second. Um, so tense, we've got said or start, we're watching something. What's it gonna be? Action. Yeah, something is happening, ing. Anything ing here is going to be for action here. Okay, so a start, present continuous, action. So we're using a start. And then lastly, who's it happening to? We. So let's go to the present tense for the time being, even though it's present continuous, and let's look at the we form, estamos. So the first word is going to be estamos in this sentence. Now, we have conjugated the we are bit with estamos. What about watching? Watching comes from to watch, oops, which is ver. So, viendo. If you don't know how this tense works, I'll put some links in the description. You can look at the other grammar pages on this channel. But estamos viendo. And then a horror film. Um, let's just say una película, which is a film. 
on a pellicula accent there. And then de horror, or like de terror even. I'm going to use de terror there. Estamos viendo una pellicula de terror. Um, and then this is the they form. So it's we, isn't it? We are watching it. Vale? Okay, how are you? This is a really easy one. I'm not going to think about all the different things. I'm just going to think, how do you say, how are you? Maybe your teacher, when you enter the classroom, how do they greet you? ¿Cómo estás? So, ¿cómo estás? How are you? If it's, if you want to be formal, you can say just ¿cómo está? Um, if you want to be formal about it, because that's the um, he, she ending for usted. So, ¿cómo estás? So, ¿cómo está? Is how are you? Now, the food was called. What do we say about food? I start to describe food you have eaten or you are eating. We have eaten this food. That's how we know it's cold. Right? So, la comida is first. What tense is this? The food was called. What tense are we going to use? The imperfect tense. Vale? So, he, she, estaba. La comida. Estaba, and then cold is just frío. But we can't use frío if you say fría. Why? Because la comida is um is feminine. So la comida estaba fría. Okay. Next one. My friend will be a lawyer in the future. I'm just gonna do this slightly quickly. So mi amigo. He she will be lawyer is jobs occupation. It's going to be um, ser, isn't it? So, mi amigo será. This a comes from here. A over there. So, mi amigo será. The word for lawyer, do we know that word? Now, do we say un? No, we don't. As I said earlier when we talked about occupation, there's no un here. We don't use un in um, like jobs. Uno, una. So, será abogado. I'm doing it as masculine, so mi amigo será abogado, and then en el futuro. Okay, nearly there, but like halfway through these, with these, halfway through with these examples. So my primary school was small. Um, mi escuela. How do we say primary? Because escuela is a school. Mi escuela primaria. And let's ignore the words for a second. Small, peque, pequeña. And pequeña, because it's escuela, it's feminine, la escuela. Now, this was, we're thinking what tense this is. Um, what tense is, my, my primary school was small. We're describing something in the past, always going to be the imperfect. It wasn't small for one day, it's been small for like years and years, you know. So that's the imperfect tense. And then um, ser or estar, describing something, is a physical description of something, so ser. Imperfect ser, we find we're going to use era. So mi escuela primaria. Era pequeña. Okay, his phone, su móvil, was en su cocina, is the word for kitchen. So we're using su for his, su for his. It was, what it was that we're going to use. The location, so estar, estaba. Estaba en su cocina. Vale, next, the watch, el reloj, is on the table. Um, on the table, we're going to say, en la mesa, we're going to say. And then is, is esta, is the present tense, he, she, it, esta. Um, this is the place of something, or even the location, which is why we're using estar. Okay, our dog. Nuestro is the word our. I don't think a lot of people know this one, but nuestro is our. Nuestro perro, double R, perro, is playing. We see the ING again, so we know it's the present continuous tense. Estar jugando. And then en el parque. Okay, nearly there. And then if you want to download this whole document, you can do so on asosbyanish.com slash grammar. Okay. Next month, I'm going to say... You can say el próximo mes, el mes próximo, o el mes que viene. Which I like this one, it's a bit more fancier. El mes que viene, I will be. 
estaré en los Estados Unidos. Um, if this was USA, which I'm going to take that as it is, USA, los Estados Unidos, estaré, hopefully you can see why it's estaré, to be los de e future ending. There's no condition in this, this is the future one. Um, okay, she, tricky here, she was a nurse before she became a doctor. Ella, we can say for she, we don't need to, but we can. She was a nurse. This is about a job, isn't it? So occupation. We're using said. What tense is the imperfect tense? She wasn't a doctor for like a nurse, so for like a day, it was for a long period of time. So ella era enfer enfermera. Vale? Um, no una in here. No una. Ella, enf ella, sorry. ella era enfermera before is antes. The structure antes de plus infinitive. So what is the infinitive to say to become? So before becoming, basically, is what you're saying. Um, is a reflexive verb. We can say convertir, so I'm going to use. Convertir looks like convert. Convertirse. And then en medica. Vale? En doctor. Um, again, no, um, what's it called, like, article there. Okay. We were in Texas last week. Now, um, we were is the last week actually even tells you is the preterite tense. And is it estar or ser? Estar for location. So. We were in Texas last week. Estuvimos. You can say nosotros, but I'm not going to hear. Estuvimos in Texas. Texas, however you say that in Spanish. Texas, um, and last week I'll say la semana pasada. Okay, how many of you have? Three, three left. We can do this. So, my teacher, mi profesor. The word maestro um, is not as common, it's not as commonly used in, sort of sp in Spanish, Spain, or Spanish from Spain. Um, so we're going to use mi profesor instead of mi maestro, mi maestro, mi profesor was el, ignore the word for a second, enfermo. You see the similarity between the word enfermo and the job enfermera or enfermero. Switch back to blue, um, enfermo, and then a few days ago, this ago is hace, really important sort of structure. If you see hace plus the time frame, so hace unos días I'm going to use, this hace is ago, okay? So, was, how are we going to say was? My teacher was ill. What tense is this, first of all? The preterite tense, right? So, ser o estar? Estar, because your condition of someone, like how are you feeling, emotion, whatever, is ill. Um, estuvo. He, she. Estuvo. Vale? Um, you, vi, uh, Okay. Two more, we are students, this is the present tense. Somos is we are, no estamos, because it's describing like a description of something. Um, it's also like you think of it as job as well. Somos alumnos o estudiantes. And last but not least, my phone was stolen. This is the passive voice. I made you a separate video on this actually. Um, passive voice. It's not, oh, he stole my phone, it's my phone was stolen. Does it, you don't know who stole it, it's just it, it happened to the object, my phone was stolen. Mi móvil was, is fue, in the preterite. Um, we're not using estuvo, um, because in the passive voice, actually, you always just use um, ser. So fue robado. Vale? Um, and that's all of them, isn't it? Let's zoom back. Vale, subscribe for more grammar videos and go to ace.spanish.com slash grammar to download my grammar PDFs and worksheets. Adios!